OK, we're at uh, Synth DIY 2014 with uh, Colin, who's uh, going to talk us through his uh, Circlon sequencer and uh, talk a bit about the development and some of the unique uh, functionality. So it looks, it looks like we were talking about the, the development of the sequencer and it's, it's took you many years of uh, developing, starting with a BBCB micro, going on to uh, custom hardware for that and then developing various iterations of, of this hardware sort of platform. But I say, it, uh, I say it, look, it looks a bit like the, the 16 steps. Are happening. Yeah, I think it's, the, uh, it's, pre it's, it's pretty clear where the inspiration yeah. for this sort of um, XOX style step sequencing comes from. This 909 probably looks like it's not switched on at the moment, but that's just because I've got the, the sequencer of it disabled because it's hooked up to the Circlon. So you've actually modified the 909 so it yeah. can talk to the Circlon. Yeah, the 909, inside the 909 it's got the analog board and then it's got a separate digital board and the digital board, the sequencer board, has some digital lines that go into the, the voice board to trigger the sounds. So in this one the analog, the, sorry, the digital board is, is disconnected um, and I've got a board inside there that's connected to a signal that's coming from the Circlon that receives um, a high-speed drum trigger interface that the Circlon outputs that's triggering the drum sounds in the Circlon directly. Uh, and I did that because, um, as I was saying to you earlier, time, MIDI is, is too slow. MIDI works fine for um, synth sounds, because synth sounds will tend not to have instant attacks, they might have attack times in the sort of one or two, or, you know, a few millisecond range. Drum sounds have all got instantaneous attacks. When you're using the sequencer inside a 909 and you trigger more than one sound on the same step, then all those sounds are all getting triggered at exactly the same moment, within a few microseconds of each other. So the, the drum trigger interface that's on the Circlon it's done through the, the DIN sync port, it's just in a different mode that it works at. It runs as a high speed serial interface. Okay. So um, you've actually developed an interface for the 909 that communicates. Yeah, I've got the there's a there's one that I'm I'm doing for the Circlon as well, it's like a separate box. Uh, I've not gone one with me because the ones that I've built so far I've sold to Circlon owners. But it's a separate box that has like um, sixteen pairs of outputs for an accent CV and a trigger pulse right. and that plugs into the, a DIN cable into that output and you can map which MIDI notes it's going to map to and when you send it when you put it on a, in a pattern um, all the notes that happen on a particular beat in the pattern all those triggers are, are synchronized so that they all happen at exactly the same time uh, there was a pattern in here I don't know if it's if I can find it now one I had I did the other day tell you what we'll just create one and I'll show you what I mean so if you create a new pattern if you if you hit a note on the same step so this is just triggering every sound in the machine at the same time and you hear it you, you if you were doing that over MIDI that's like, um, there's 11 sounds in the 909, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and there's the ride as well. So that's 11 different MIDI notes. So to send 11 notes over MIDI, it takes a millisecond for the first one, then you've got running status, so it's two thirds of a millisecond for all the rest of them. So it's like seven or eight milliseconds it would take, and that, that you would hear that as being a sort of spread of the sounds yeah, over time. Yeah, yeah. But what this is doing, it's sending these out in a little burst of data. It takes like a millisecond and a half to send that whole burst of data. And once the board's received that whole burst, then it, it outdate, updates all the triggers at the same time. So it, it sounds like you don't hear that that's triggering lots of different sounds. You know, you can turn individual ones off. And it means you can. Uh, they say this is a much superior interface for programming 909. <laughs> yeah, you mean you can. So you can just program all the velocities. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. So you're, you're triggering. 
doing velocity groups there and uh, you know, they, what you've got here is I'll stop it so you can hear what I'm doing you've got like the, the steps here so these map onto the steps that you can see um, the number that's up there is the the length of each step so yeah. you can zoom back out so you're looking at this as a 16th note pattern okay. so you'll see that there's lots overlapping on there so the 16th notes are like the bass drum yeah. it's four steps long and one step on that so let's just turn it so. So that's sixteenth notes it's set to. It's four steps long and there's one bass drum. So the bass drum's hit, hit is happening on that step. You can put in. You can as you increase the the um, the time length of a step, you'll see it's scanning through there faster. So you can put on. And if you turn the encoder on it, then you're adjusting the, the velocity for that step. So oh, the that, note that's that on, that's yeah, it's it's just for just for that particular row. You see, you're scrolling through the rows, so each row has a, a different. Um, and as you turn that knob, you're adjusting the velocity for the just for the snare drum. It's just so the snare drum row. knobs down, and that was drawing a. Ah, yeah, right, okay, I see, yeah, if, you, if you've got multiple hits on the same step, um, when you hold one encoder, um, it, it, does a, it sort of does a slope, it's called slope edit, so it basically draws a line as you hold one in. It's like a really fast way of drawing it. Yeah, it lets you do a sort of... Um, That's my to, to velocity at the moment, but could you do that for controller, control J's data as well? Well, in the CK pattern, you can do it for the velocity or the the, the, the gate length, but that doesn't matter in percussion sounds because the gate length doesn't make a difference. And you can do it for the delay, so there's, each of these notes has a delay time. Oh, right, okay. So, so you like can. Um, sort of swing, uh, so you can. Um, you not hear it so much on that sort of note, but if you go back to 16th notes, you'll hear that one's got the delay on it. Fewer notes, you can't see all these extra notes. You see how we're looking at uh, 64th notes there. So there's like three 64th notes in that step. If you go back to the 16th note, you, you can only see one step. But there's like there's three notes happening on that step sort of thing. So when you start using tighter timings, you need to zoom in to see what you're, what's going on. Yeah, if you if you're going to compose a, a, a complete song, a circle, you've got you've got, like, you've got song scenes and tracks. Right. You kind of build up like one merge them into. Another. Yeah, you've got the 64 tracks. You can choose the maximum number of tracks. I have it set to a maximum of 32. So the 16 keys give you 16 tracks. You can in the in the track page you can see which track you're on with that number there, so you can select each track. I've only got a couple of instruments mapped, so the instrument assignments down there. So this is set to the 303. That track set to the 909. So you program that in. You tell it what. Yeah, you've got when you when you go to a track, you can go down. Well, this one's set for many more. You can go down to the instrument selection, and you can choose which instrument. So you predefine your instruments and your instruments tell it um, which MIDI port and MIDI channel it's going to send to. And also CV outs as well. Uh, though the CV outs, CV works. In